fun stories before the show started yeah. today. Bill, legendary free throw maker out of West Tennessee. And uh, can, you, I, can I tell the story real quick? In his prime, I'm, I'm, he, he he iced the game from the free throw <laughs> lines. Nothing, not, he didn't even touch the rim on that free throw, Bill. <laughs> it did not. It did not. We were playing our arch rival. The game was one second ago in the game. I was fouled. Uh, the coach called timeout, called me over and said, Bill, you have, you have this, don't you? You're not nervous, are you? I said, not at all, coach. I have it. Just trust me. Well, I walked the foul uh, free throw line. I shot the ball just as cool as could be. It went at about 45 degree angles <laughs> didn't hit the backboard did not hit anything <laughs> didn't get any rim <laughs> did not get any rim yeah, right. no, nor any net unfortunately nothing but floor i think they call those <laughs> right, yeah. uh, well you right? can't you can't uh diminish those kinds of memories because they sort of <laughs> yeah they stay with you yeah even though you've tried to forget about it maria you can't forget about no, it. no <laughs> i agree i agree we played in a um actually um rob would know this in the catholic league mm -hmm. in um pittsburgh at the time and we lost the state championship by a lot when i was a senior um, but you got there at least. yeah but we did we had a really good coach and I, I so i digress but the first year we played in jumpsuits. Okay, so this is nineteen. Orange, orange. What? No. no. <laughs> and then and they picked up litter after they, 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 they should have been orange. Was like, <laughs> it was one piece, and he was like, the first thing he did was he was like, "We got to get you all new uniforms because <laughs> you can't shoot a jump shot in a one piece." In a, I mean, in a onesie. Just, yeah. Yeah. Did they have was, feet in them too? No, no, no. They were shorts. <laughs> but we were coached by nuns before this guy came along. <clears throat> Mike Kearney. He was, um, and I'm still in touch with him. So. Well, if you get that sister from Loyola, yeah. she yeah. probably knows your basketball well exactly. enough to do that. Right? Exactly. I can, I can imagine seeing Marie out there with an orange jumpsuit. It with wasn't with, orange. With, 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 it let, was me, let me let me tell my story okay. as, I, as I envision as he envisions with, it. With, with a little foot his own, <laughs> and it might have had a little uh, bunny tail on the back of it, and, bouncing but, around. One, one of those that. litter sticks at the end so you yeah. can clean up the highway when you're done. It, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. They were red. We were the Font Bond Falcons. So Font there bon. you go. Font Bond. That's good Water <laughs> Academy. That's yeah. the good stuff right there. Yeah, there you go. Our guest in this segment knows a little something about high school sports too, Danny Staggers, and uh, college as well. He played football and uh, in college. Danny, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. How are you doing today? Come on a little closer to your microphone Sorry. there. Pull that close to you as well. All right. Yeah, Danny is an expert at elder care law here in the state of West Virginia and has clients all around. And if you are near an interesting hotel, he's even willing to travel to uh, come and see you no matter how far away you are, provided the hotel meets his interesting criteria. What, what is the story of this hotel? All right. There's a um, hotel in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. It's not the Greenbrier. I was going to say. It is not the Greenbrier. This guy he apparently had a lot of money came into White Sulphur Springs, buys a farm for special needs kids, comes back into White Sulphur Springs, talks to the mayor and says, is there anything else I can do? And the mayor says, yeah, we would like to have another hotel because, you know, the Greenbrier is too expensive and too elaborate. And so he buys the White Sulphur Springs High School and he turns it into a high-tech hotel. So you walk into your room, you wave a hand, the lights come on, you wave another hand, the blinds go up. So I had a client call me. <laughs> that could be from a pr Union, problem. <laughs> I know. This is going to be horrible because now I'm going to get calls from all over from Union, West Virginia. Uh -huh. And they, she said, I have a special needs child. Would you come? I'd like to you know, meet with you. I said, I'm coming to you. <laughs> I'll stay in that hotel. <laughs> I want to stay in this hotel. She said, well, I'll drive up to White Sulphur Springs. And I said, no, I'm coming to Union, West Virginia, because there's another historical tidbit, because after the Civil War, they built a Civil War statute outside of Union, and they thought Union, West Virginia would grow out to this Civil War statute. Never did. Yeah. It just stands right there by itself. So I want to see that again, too. Nice. Very good. Well, it's great to have you here, Danny, as always. We always learn so much uh, when you're here to discuss uh, some of the little in intricacies of elder law that uh, an aging population like the state of West Virginia has needs to be aware of. Uh, so uh, first, I want to ask you a couple of questions. Does what happens with DHHR affect the work that you do? Has not so far, and I've really got to examine that, but it has not changed in any ways whatsoever, which uh, this is a, a really critical 
area for, for seniors to make sure that they can get Medicaid assistance and, and it has not been impacted whatsoever. Excellent. So we're, so we're still in good shape from that standpoint. Okay. And in regards to what the legislature did this year, were there any changes statewide that affected anything that you I'm did? not seeing anything. Uh, they talked about making uh, the transfer on death deed a little bit easier to, to change. That's where I can, I can do a deed. Um, Mom and Dad can do a deed. It's revocable, therefore there's no five-year look back. But when, you, when the person passes, it goes outside your estate so that creditors cannot make a claim against it, which is really critical for people because the home is the most valuable asset. Sure. And, and, and so mom and dad can do this deed and not have to worry about later on creditors making a claim and, and grabbing that house. So it's a really critical point for us to have that uh, that tool to, to protect an asset like the, the home very few people know about it and and so you know it's nice to be able to talk about it on the air now about the transfer on debt deed okay very good i know when you come in you usually have some things prepared that you want to make sure we, we cover so <laughs> i don't want to kill all the time so you don't get to the stuff you really want to get to so lead off with what you think is well most and, and this comes back to what maria had asked me the last time we were talking about people doing their own will um, her son is, is, has seen that in the fiduciary office, and I've been seeing it a lot recently. People think they can do their own will. And, and what happens is um, you could do it. And, and, in fact, you can handwrite out your own will. You don't need a notary. You don't need witnesses. It's called a holographic will. Uh, and if it's logical, you're good to go. But give me a couple, give me a couple of examples. We had uh, some people come in. They typed out the will didn't have witnesses and have and had it notarized. That's not a valid will, you know, if you type it out like that. Uh, they did not have a notary. And so, you know, as, as, as Marie's son can tell you, you know, now you got to go back and get the witnesses to verify that's their signature. It's got to be notarized. It just creates a lot of problems. Uh, Seriously, Dan, yes. if it's handwritten, it can be a legal will. It is. If, it, if it's typed out, it is not, unless there's proper witnesses and notarization. Exactly, a okay. proper form, yeah. you know, according okay. to the statute. But but what that's called, it's called a holographic yes. will. Mm -hmm. I handwrite it out, I date it, I sign it, it's a valid will. Do you have to, do you have, to have a witness? No. No witness Because what happens, Bill, when you pass... Then your family can go to the bank and get two witnesses to verify that's your mm -hmm. handwriting. Yeah, sure. To, you know, to verify that's, you know, how you wrote out a will. Um, I'll it's, give you another. It's an interesting nuance. I never mm -hmm. knew that. Yeah. yeah. If you I mean, handwrite it, it counts more than typing. <laughs> well, you can type it, mm -hmm. but it's got to be in a proper form. Right. Because now to get it admitted to the uh, probate office, it's got to have the, you know, the um, proper. Um, witnesses and signed and notarized and you know uh, let me stop the stuff just there uh if they if you have it typed out and you have two witnesses but no notary notary is it a valid will it can be but you got to go back and get uh somebody to, a notary to verify there's a statement you have to, that yes we sign that uh will in front of you know the okay. testator or testator but if there's notary without witnesses is it a valid will <clears throat> I don't know. Okay, uh, but but to have it valid, you should have both witnesses and notary if it's typed out. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's the statutory form yeah. to make okay. sure that's done correctly. You know, if it goes to the up to the court, the court may say no. That's an you know an actual intent, but it's it's for me it's it's not clear that that would uh, pass in in the probate office. Give you another example <laughs> is you want to exclude a, a child. Child is one of the you know black sheep in the family. Rotten kid. Rotten kid. <laughs> but if you don't mention that child in the will, that child can come back and make a claim against the estate. I told you he was rotten, Danny. You see that? <laughs> 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 Dad, get out. You know, Rob, it's always fun to be here because you never know what kind of comments coming from which direction. You don't know where they're coming from. Is that rotten kid? And, and then you have Maria on the other side, always proper, always... Waiting uh, your turn. Uh, you know, yeah, waiting your turn. Waiting Why? Your turn. <laughs> Why? <laughs> but, but in this particular case, the family came in and said, we didn't need an attorney. We got the neighbor to type it out. They wanted to exclude one of the children because that child had done so many you know, negative things. And they did mention it in the will. So some people come in and say, well, I want to pay that child a dollar. You know, I've heard that. All you have to do is mention that child. I do not want to uh, include 
anything for this child. I'm intentionally um, not leaving anything to this child. And that's good. But this particular neighbor did not put it in the will. So now that child, there were three children, that child can come in and make a claim for one third of the estate because it was not mentioned in the will. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, those are little things you have to be careful about. But I thought about your comments last time and I thought I ought to bring that up just to follow through you know, to make sure you do it right. I'm and, and I think, too, um, Danny, there's a, a bunch of um, companies, yes. if you will, out there yes. that, um, you know, that's one in particular, I probably shouldn't mention, but I will, um, called freewill.com. Yes. And you just go on there and they have a template, yes. in other mm-hmm. words, that you can use that... Um, and and a, not just them, but a couple of others yes. have reached out to us as a yes. nonprofit, yes. saying if you more or less advertise this, yes. um, you know, we'll certainly direct donors yes. your way, yes. um, people who want to leave a legacy gift, what have you. And it's kind of like something. In fact, Will Lawrence and the fiduciary is like, yes. Mom, you know, <laughs> you probably don't want to go down that path. So, and, and you, it, there's a. I heard somebody say. I'll mention another name, Legal Zoom, mm-hmm. and and the, the comment was Legal Zoom to Legal Doom because because <laughs> <laughs> you know you don't know um, specific items that you want to take care of, you know you want to put in to take care of the family, mm-hmm. and 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 that is just a format that is just made and it doesn't deal with your specific needs. Right, Danny, we've been talking about children. What about grandchildren? Do they? If they're not listed, do they have a claim, or does it stop with the first generation? It, according to the code, it's that first generation. Okay. You know, because basically uh, the way the code reads and the logic I think behind this is, and I may be corrected on this, is mom and dad forgot about me. You know, the, the grandchildren, yeah, they might forget about grandchildren names and so forth. I remember my dad could never remember the children's names. He'd go through the list of us. Yeah. But uh, children specifically have to be mentioned. There's a there's a term for it, but I can never pronounce it, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> so, um, and then the follow up on that, Marie and and, and let me Bill, before we're talking about it, go ahead and uh, use the term because Rob will be very accommodating. <laughs> will not say anything to you if you if you mispronounce it, Danny. Go right ahead. <laughs> it's something like I'm joking, obviously. Uh, oh, thank God, because <laughs> I didn't want to get down that avenue. <laughs> City Councilman Jason Baker got the Bill Stubblefield treatment yeah, yesterday. Saw, I'm surprised I was not mentioned when he when he said that. He, he mixed a metaphor and he said, "I don't want to be a broken horse." <laughs> yeah. we, we had some fun with that one yeah. for a while. Yeah, I'm not trying it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you don't want to be a broken horse either. That's you? right. Yeah. That's right. So, so the other one that I want to talk about too, and, and again, it falls back to what we've been talking about, is so many people will go to an attorney, and they the the attorney just has a computer generated will, and they put it in. It's maybe it's three or four inches thick, and the attorney doesn't even know what's in it, and and the client obviously is not going to know. And, and we had a case, I don't want to mention names, there was um, um, an, an attorney that did it, but it was it was so screwed up because once dad died, mom couldn't do anything. And she needed assets to you know take care of herself and live. We had to go to court to get it undone. So be careful if, you know, if you're just getting something computer generated to, and ask the attorney questions. What am I getting? What's here? Why am I doing all this? Danny, under normal circumstances, if you died without a will, but you have a surviving spouse, wouldn't yes. everything just go specifically straight to the spouse unless otherwise indicated? Well, that depends. Again, that's controlled by statute. It's called intestate succession. So let's just say mom has been, um, mom and dad have been married before, you know, the blended marriages. So um, dad passes. If all the children are moms, and I can't remember this correctly, I've got the statute here, but three-fourths of the uh, assets would go to mom, one-fourth one would go to her children. Now, if you've got children on dad's side, one half goes to mom, and then the other half goes out to the children. It's, de- it's designed you know, by the statute as to try to guess what mom and dad would want, and, and that's why you always encourage people to get a will. So that they know what they're doing, and it's not contr- controlled by statute. Right, and I think uh, part of the thing too is while you don't want to update every 
yes. other months, you know, right. you're mad at so and so and you go and, and change it, you do need to keep it up to date. I'm thinking yes. in particular of a friend of mine who um, her mother in law is in her nineties now and it was a blended family. Yes. And the mother in law has things very clearly spelled out in the will. However, during the last several years she has been giving one of the adult children a certain amount of money per month mm -hmm. um, for certain services and she has that on a sheet somewhere else right. Right. and i'm telling my friend i'm like has is that you know in the will somewhere because right. i'm gonna tell you that judy's gonna come back and say that little sheet doesn't mean anything right. um that right. she's sort of kept a handwritten yes. um deductions yes. of what's in the estate that's, and, that's exactly right maria i mean eef. and to follow up on that and that gets into elder law too because in West Virginia, if, if for example, I did a lot of work for my mom, and she would give me maybe $50 for doing something. In West Virginia, that's not um, that's considered a gift, meaning I do it out of love and affection for my mom. So when mom would hand me maybe an extra $20, you know, that's considered a gift. Mm -hmm. And so you got to be careful with that because now you're looking at uh, – Several things. I go to a nursing home that could be used against me for try, trying to get any public assistance. You've got to have a contract. Mom has to write a contract, and it has to have certain provisions in there to make sure that it's not considered a gift that mom mom has given out. Now so, that could work the same way we were talking about it earlier. A handwritten would suffice, contract. but if it's typed out with well, this agreement or contract, it needs to be notarized and signed. I believe that would be okay, the better yeah. way, Bill. And to tell you the truth, the way the Department of Health and Human Resources looks at that, it has to be that uh, it's it's paid for the services performed. Uh, it's not for future services. Uh, a doctor has to recommend this that mom can't do that by herself, um, you know, and it would stop upon mom's passing. Yeah. You know, there's certain little provisions you got to make sure that's in that contract. So even though we uh, we sometimes jest to make fun about caring about a lawyer friends uh, making a lot of money at our yes. expense, uh, in a situation like that, it'd be best to go to a lawyer or go to someone that knows what they're doing. And and that that point's well taken, Bill. It's I, you know it's. Judge yourself. That's why I was just saying up in front. You know, ask questions. You know, ask them where, what, what, what seminars they've gone to. Ask them uh, how this makes logical sense that what I'm doing. You know, yeah. just don't run into. Oh, I see. You know, an attorney on the street corner. Make sure you ask <laughs> questions and, and make sure you understand understand what they're doing for you. Sure. It's kind of like I remember going to the doctor and everybody's saying, "Ask the doctor questions." Just don't let a doctor come in and say, here, you need this. And, and ask the attorney questions. You know. Well, I think in any, you know, in any case, you need to advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to sort of let your wishes be known. Yes. Um, which is the other thing. I think that um, many of us have just sort of this concept that... I'm not going to get into the whole advanced care planning piece, the, right. the hospice hat that I wear. But, nice. um, you know, you need to have <clears throat> your your affairs in order. Because yes. I have this other friend yes. whose husband died relatively suddenly, uh -huh. early 60s, um, of COVID, when Ooh. COVID was at its height. And she had, they had nothing really right. spelled out. But no children. Right. Um, so it was fairly simple. But... It was things like computer passwords and, yes. you know, all that kind of stuff that she just started literally from ground zero while she was grieving. And, you know, so the, the bottom line is you just need to spell it all out and and let people know what it is you want. And that's so. go, ahead, no, go right here. Yeah, that brings up another point. You know, people should like make a letter and keep it in a safe place. Mm -hmm. All your important papers should be in a safe place. Where are your bank accounts? You pass, and if that you know if that count sits over there, it could go into unclaimed property. If <laughs> nobody finds it, you know, so you should make a list of it. Make sure your people, you know, your your loved ones know where it is, mm -hmm. and and outline what you want. We found when my mom passed um, four years before my dad did, um, we were finding things like 
my dad would call and he said, we have this like insurance policy that I had no idea wasn't even right. around and he just right. found it in a safe deposit box yes. I'm like oh my gosh mom yeah um, but anyway yeah. Jackie Long asked a question uh, Danny uh, I think all of us appreciate the fact if we have a major change we should update our will to accommodate the major change but in the absence of a major change is there a period of time that you should have your will updated to capture all the little small changes that may have happened what I say Bill is about at once every five years five years you know look at your documents if they're okay you you know you're good to go <laughs> but it's I always say at least you know within that five-year period you should be looking at it making sure you're capturing you know the little yeah, nuances sure. that have you know come along attorney at law danny staggers is our guest here on the program he is in downtown martinsburg by day and at night traveling the state looking for interesting places to stay <laughs> you, better, you better clarify that rob <laughs> I would, i'm not sure i'd leave that out to my my worst enemy especially someone nice like danny it was a good description so. uh, danny we've got about five minutes left what else do you have for us well today? a couple other things and, and and it's it's so hard because i, I want to talk about so much but the other thing that that i find interesting is what is called elective share i had um I had a couple friends there in Kaiser, husband and wife, and the husband was a dentist. And the wife came over and she said, if my husband leaves me out of the will, can I, can I do anything? And there's this thing, it's called elective share. If you've been married 17 years, she's entitled to 50% of your assets. So you can file a petition if he dies without leaving you in the will, uh, spouse, uh, you can file this petition and claim 50% of the assets. Is that if you're actively married at the time of the uh, the passing, or uh, could that be in, in after a divorce or something? Not after leaves? divorce. Because when you said actively married, I was wondering, even if you're separated yeah. and you haven't gotten that divorce, spouse can come back on that elective share. There's a, I gotcha. Yeah, there's a case out of Massachusetts where uh, the couple were um, separated but not divorced. The husband buys a winning lottery ticket. And it was during the term of the marriage, they were getting a divorce, but not divorced yet. She came back and made a claim for half mm -hmm. those winnings, yeah. and she got it. Why 17 years? Uh, ask the legislature. I know, but why? Uh, it's kind <laughs> of a random I, number. I, 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 won't, I won't go down that path. Yeah, <laughs> this is like, I guess you've made a commitment by then, Bill. <laughs> and, and then one other thing I want to mention, and yes. I always circle back to it, is, is a lot of people will come in, they'll ask for wills, they'll ask for a trust. But as Bill and I have talked about, you've passed. The most important document for a couple is the power of attorney. You know, with the financial, medical power of attorney so that spouses can take care of each other, make medical decisions and financial decisions for each other. We're getting a lot of good comments on our Facebook page this morning, one of which, what about common law marriages? <laughs> West Virginia does not have it. They, there's only, okay. Yeah, there's only maybe four states anymore, I think, have the common law marriage. It's not very... So you could be loud. living together, but not married for 17, 20, 25 years. You'd have no, no protection. Claim. That's exactly right. And if you don't, but if yeah. you have a will and you named the person right. you're cohabitating yeah, that's with, exactly that right. that's obviously is yeah. fine. But if you do not, yeah. then it goes to a parent or a child or, or somebody. Sibling, um, you don't want yeah. to receive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but mention the name. I won't mention names. <laughs> no, no, you, but you have to mention the name in the will. Oh, if you, you have a child. Or, yeah, yeah, that's so, exactly right. Yeah. But the point part is 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 to have the. Um, you know, have a will, in yeah. my personal opinion. I mean, wills are important, but the most important, in my opinion, is the power of attorney. But yeah. the law can trump your wishes. It can. In regards to a spouse. Yes. So if you are still married, but you hate your spouse, you can't cut them out if you've been married more than 17 well, years. and the other thing, though, Rob, you can come back and you can do a prenup or a postnup. And you agree. You know, I, this is what I'm receiving. Oh, if you're if you're not getting along, you're not agreeing. With <laughs> you're not agreeing that. <laughs> that ain't happening. You don't need any enough anything. <laughs> no, 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 no. That is not going to happen. Danny, how do people reach you for yes. more questions on the things we've covered today and other things as well? Sure. Uh, my name is Danny Staggers. I'm at 133 East John Street, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Uh, phone number is 304-267-3915. Email address staggersmartinsburg at gmail.com. Good to see you again. Good seeing you. <laughs> good seeing you. Always all. good to see you, Danny. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Danny Stagger is attorney at law.